G'day, how you going? Are you an apple? It's 12 inch by 16 inch on a canvas cloth quality art. Get a better quality painting as well. Okay, I do have the bottom half masked down because I want to do just the top half. Okay, and then I'll come to the top in my own time. I don't have to race against time. Okay, so I'll bring you over here. Okay, that's the reference picture I found on Unsplash. Beautiful colours there. And I want to start with the sky, like I said before, okay? So come down here to the canvas palettes. <laughs> the canvas palette, the palette. Now I'm going to use my two inch putter on a brush. And I want to mix that up with retarder. Okay, and this is just, that retarder stops acrylic paint from drying fast. And what that's going to do, because in hindsight, acrylics can be dry and chalky looking, you know, and this allows them to sit on this surface like oil. So look at this here. This is craft paint, poster paint, student paint from the art shop. And I want to get it right up here just to get our sky. Now the water is going to be blended as well, but I'll do that later. I don't want to try and race against time and try and get it all done before it dries. So I'll get that onto the canvas. Just push it on there any old way. And now I want to stroke it into the two for the canvas. Make sure it's everywhere, okay? Uh, I'm looking at the... Um, that there this is just for the sky so i want to get the sky done now so i'll, I'll get the sky done now all right so we'll get all that i've even that mixture up onto my canvas there now if you're painting this on canvas paper you will get a different result uh, it could get it could push the paint right down to the paper and you could see paper through it who knows what can happen now back down to the palette here yeah, sometimes it might buffer it. Now, I need my, where are we? I'm going to have a very grey blue, very minimal blue. So I'm going to get a bit of that there. Uh, I'm using cerulean blue. The colours will be listed in the description below for the replay. And I want the grey. And I want the, a bit of quinacridone magenta. Is that the one I'm using? Yes, just to get that dark, hazy, violety colour you get down in the atmosphere when the sun's going down. That's what I'm trying to make. So first off, I'm going to get the grey-blue sky done. Get enough of that blue into the grey here. It's very grey, but a tinge of that blue. I love cerulean blue. I feel cerulean blue gives me more of a realistic sky colour. Nothing fake looking. So I'll get this... And I'm just going to colour the whole sky in with this. How's that going? Grey, very grey, very grey. Good. But it's got that blue in there. Let's hope I made enough, eh? Now I want to push this. I'll get that out of the way. I want to push this. I'm crisscrossing it, pushing it into that retarded white craft paint. It doesn't have to be dark, this one. It's subtle. Crisscross it. So you're virtually getting it in there, spread over the place. Don't worry how messy it feels. Get it this way, that way, on there, in there, under there, and at there. Now we can even it off. Stroke it left and right. There we go. That is the colour of the score I want. Now just look at that. Any beginner, if they've never done that before, you can practice that and you can do it. Then we're on to our next step. All right, let's get down here. We've got a little bit of that quinacridone magenta. Let's start putting some of that into there, okay? Into that grey colour. Okay. A little bit more. See, I'm just getting it on the corner of the brush and ending little bits as I need it because I can see the value that I want it to try and go to. That's pretty much it. And be careful, your uh, acrylics do dry darker. 1P, 145 in Dubai, a few people in Dubai there. Yeah, it's a different time slot. Now I want this at the bottom about a third of the way up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I wanna really crisscross that into it. 
it's mixing with that grey blue colour as well so it's lightening up and now I want to bring that let's get a bit more crisscross it up into there a bit more to get it a bit more of a gradient feel to it there we go that's looking beautiful in real life that's looking good and I've just used this one brush for the whole process now there you go if you haven't done that before you can practice that and you can do that also that's it all over Red Rover now I will have to wash this brush because I am th yeah well I actually what I'll do I'll peel that off because we've got to get the water so I'll just peel that off mind me a minute and the water is going to be more blue so back down here um, got my cerulean blue again and what other colors there there's gray and there's a little bit of there's gray in it and there's some little bit of black's going to go in it later on so we'll just add these values in there okay so i've got black gray and that blue yes yeah, so i want to uh, wash this brush because i need to do the water side of the painting still daylight outside let's see if the sun goes down before i finish so i'll give this a wash And I'll give it a severe flogging in my beater bucket. That way she's ready to rock and roll. Uh, we've got our craft white. I'm going to grab a bit more because this bit here doesn't have any retarder in there. So I'll grab a bit more in there. A few more drops. Now we need, see, I thought I was going to do the sky and muck around. I had other things in my mind. I could have just done the whole surface of the canvas but not to worry if you watch the video a couple of times and know what's happening you'll know what to do and what not to do so we'll get this all on there as well that way this watercolor can have beautiful blending motion in the ocean as well what is it an ocean it's i think it's more of a lake by the looks but it still looks great anyway there is mist and land separating it so i don't have to get too finical where they join but that's the footprint for the bottom area done there and I need it all wet for this to work done the same procedure as I did at the top wiping the brush now that what I added to the paint, it wasn't oil there, Sevrak Rajesh, it's retarder. This is a medium, it slows down the drying time of acrylic paint, it is not oil. Okay, now back down here, we're going to get blue and a bit of grey, bit of grey in our blue, where are we, a bit more grey in there. This will be the base colour for the water. I'm looking, looking. I might have to put a bit bigger of a pile of grey on there, just so as I can get it the way I want. There we go. This is the watercolour. Water's different, I feel. Well, naturally, it's different. You can just I've got the brush on its edge, not this way, just so I can force these bands within the water footprint, in the water area, come against the horizon layer. And I'm not going too wild like I did on the sky, rubbing it right in, but we'll get it down there. Because I want to leave areas where I can put, uh, what do you call it? light and dark values within the water so there we go now i have that black so we're going to get a bit of the black now and pull that into our 
blue, just pull it over here. It's probably going to grey it a bit because it does have grey in there. Now I'm turning the brush over and loading both sides as I'm mixing it with this big putter on a brush because I don't want any surprises when I'm going on the canvas with a big dark or bright blob. Okay, I'm just going to check that value. It needs to be a little bit darker and you can see the difference in value now how it's darkened up and a little trick that the good old great late Bill Alexander showed dark at the bottom and light in the middle gives it that vision where it's going out there so I'm going to go dark here crisscross it crisscross it and if anything it's dark here I've got the brush on its side now and I'm pulling it. Now all this paint can still move, you know why? Because it's got that retarder and the white paint in there. Here we go, I'm gonna get a little bit more. This can pull, oh it's a bit dark but I'll, I'm gonna wipe that brush, that's okay, that's okay. And I wanna pull that all the way where I want it. I'm pushing it where I want, now I'll come this way. I'm going to grab some more of the blue, do that. I can grab some more white if I want. Yeah, I feel that it needs a, a bit of white in there now, so I'm going to grab some white, mainly in the um, middle area where the, the setting sun, the dawning sun, whatever sun it's going to be, picking up some white, probably about here somewhere, and we'll get that scooted in there as well because that black did grey it up a bit. There we go. Now it's up to you how much you detail your water. That's it. That is it. I don't like that black there. I'm going to try and ubulate that out a bit if I can. There we go. Play with it. Just remember to take your time. You don't have to be in a rush. If you're watching someone and you feel they're in a rush, that's probably just because they're filming. But you don't have to be... Get over here a bit. You don't have to be in a rush. Okay, a lot of foreign people here today. Okay, yes, Bob Allen, you've discovered it, have you? Good stuff. Right, let me just get that there like that. What else do I got to do? I need some reflections and some scatter in the water. So I'm going to do that now. <coughs> Hang on a minute. So I just want to grab some of that craft paint again. Gee, it's getting dark so quick. And I want to grab my toothbrush, toothpaste, and I'm going to pick up that craft paint. It's very wet. Okay. Now my son's about here somewhere, so I want a nice line of this. I'll just pull my finger up a bit, right about there. Oh yeah, get it up there, get it up there. Right in the guts of it, right in the guts of it. Look at that. Just practice this procedure, because you don't want big stringy, snaky, spaghetti looking blobs on there. This adds shimmer to your water. I love doing this. Get a bit more on there. Could probably put some out here, but mainly concentrated there. Now we are going to do a bit of blending in here as well, so some of this will get disturbed while that stuff's still very wet. Okay, I'll just sit that in water. Well, I haven't even cleaned one brush yet. I've only I've done all that, believe it or not, with that one brush so far. Okay, there's a painting just there. Subtle less is best. You can just leave it like that. Now I do want a pouncer, so bear with me while I find a pouncer. And found it. That's the diameter I want. I'm going to put some white paint on the palette along with some Indian yellow. Boom, 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 boom. Down here, come down here. Indian yellow. Now, we want to get where I, I want the Indian yellow into here. Now, when I put this in there, you can probably easily do the same thing. See, I've got a blob there. I'm aware of that. So I want to taper that off. So when I'm stamping it, I'm going to get a nice edge. I'm not going to have a 
big blob on one side of it, I can control what paint I'm putting onto my canvas. It's important to know just little things like that. Now this sun's going to be here, so I want to just dance that there. Come around. Now this might look a bit, well, what's he doing? But this is to pick up the white. That's there. See, all that's still wet, that's what you want. I'm going to pick up some more of that paint and I'm going to put a bit of this in the water now. Just along here, along there, along here, coming along the horizon line. If anything, I'm going to make like a bowl. Okay. I've made like a smiley face and a top on it, like a bowl. That's just the under area to get what we're about to do now with the titanium white. You need a fan brush and we better get that all the way over here where you can get to it in. So I'm gonna put the paint there then I'll show you what I'm doing. Now watch this, see what I've done on my canvas now. If it's the first time you're watching this and you haven't painted, you can practice, 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 then just this much here, you can do that, okay? All right, I've got a fan brush. It's a hog bristle fan brush. It's just my favorite. And I've got a, this is gonna be a lot of washing involved now. So from the middle, we're gonna go from the middle. I'll just go from here. Dancing from the middle, and then slowly, as you're coming off, come up here, I want to cup some of that there. There we go, there like that. You need a blending brush. Grab yourself a few if you've got a few. I'm just using two inch blending brushes from the hardware store and a rag to constantly wipe it. Now I want to dingle and dangle the corner of my brush and slowly manipulate turmoil. See there, so you've got dull and bright values of that paint that you've just put on, because this is night time now, and it's sort of smoky and weird. There we go, bang, bang, bang. Bit of on the brush. Now this brush here, you need to wash it. If you don't, your painting's gonna turn to snot, and you don't want that, all right? Okay, now, same again, load up the brush. Start from the middle where we did before. I'm doing this top bit, then I'll come here because I don't want to bring that color up there and vice versa. So I'm going to start from here again. I'll do the same out this side. So you're, you're twisting, crisscrossing. I want to sort of, if anything, come up and over. So we've got distance there. And let that ubulate out into nothing there like that, see? And we're going to do the same again. All right. Touch, twist, manipulate. So that round yellow circle, you're hiding that with all this bullshit detail. If it's your first time here and you just heard me say that word bullshit, it's not a rude word in my vocabulary. It just means you're adding more of a wow factor to your art. And instead of people looking at it going, wow, that's not bad, they take a step back when they see your art and they go, bullshit, did you do that? And you can step back with your own smile and go, bloody oath, I did. Okay, you can see we've done two there. We're slowly covering that round circle of yellow that I've done there. Yeah, I've got to work quick because I'm filming, but at home, you don't have to rush as fast as me. I'm doing the same again. Um, I'm quickly putting some more white paint down there. And the white paint is what's doing all the magic now, mixing with that wet stuff on there. So now I want to come from here again and bring that out there, something like that. As I'm doing it, this is all gonna blend, but I still want little peekaboo pockets of this sky color in there. It's important to leave those little bullshit details within your stuff as you go along. You'll learn as you go. <clears throat> okay, and again, from the middle, I'm gonna twist, blend, I'm hiding that yellow thing Keeping all that there. Twisting it all over. Don't go in one just certain way. You need to go all different. So like, like nature intended, okay? 
Same again, I've got to quickly wipe the brush, wash it and wipe it I mean. Get some more paint. And I want to hide this bit now, so I'm going to start from the middle. I'm going to go a bit wider and all the way. As I'm going that way, I'm not coming back because that's the intensity and it's slowly wearing away as we're getting far from the center, okay? Boom, bitty, boom, boom. Can you see what I've done? All right, and I'm gonna do the same again. Get at this blending brush. I've been wiping it as I go and I wanna get that all over there. Now that was Indian yellow I used there. Now, that's pretty much that done. I'm not quite happy. Some of you might not see it, some of you probably can, but I'm not quite happy with the way I can see. One, two, three, four fingers pointing out of that. See here, one, two, three, four. So I'm quickly going to mask that if I can from the middle, bit there in that area. I'm just kind of masking that. No further from there can I, you got me? I've got to keep going out if anything, so there and out here. That's it. Where'd my blending brush go? Here we go. So let's hope that's, I'll start from the middle. There you are. Blend, turmoil, twist, agitate down here. Let's get some of that and hopefully I've disguised those four finger bands that look like sort of four fingers banding out from the middle there. I didn't quite like that. I want it to look kind of natural. And this is adding like how you get yumminess to your clouds dimension and more bullshit detail. It's just something different. Come over here, blending here. See, I'm blending in the same radius distance from the middle, okay? I'm not gonna go all of a sudden back in there again because I'll put the darker color there and I'll turn it to snot. That'll do, that'll do. I can keep mucking with that till the cows come home. All right, that's me sky. Now I've gotta quickly get this and wash it because I'm using the same diameter for the actual sun there. I need that to be white. I want it to be white. I like doing my sun's vibrant and white. So I'll just quickly wash this and dab it dry. Yeah. And I'll squeeze it in my towel like that. <clears throat> okay, that's ready to take some white. So what we'll do, uh, we'll pick up some of the craft and the white retarder there. The craft paint's more thinner, so it will stick a lot more. And we want to just get that glare. Where are we? Right in the guts. Boom, 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 boom. Right there. Dance it and just pat it on there till you see a subtle, round glare of greatness within your art there. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle because it's the brightness is disguised behind there. How's that looking? That's it. That's it. That's it. All over Red Rover. Now I need some more white paint. I tell you what, this one's using a lot of white paint, but that's okay. It'd be silly if we're doing art now. Paints are taking years to get used up. How's everything going there? Washing the brush, wiping it. Now we're gonna go in the water. Let's hope that water hasn't dried. See, that's why I put this retarder and craft paint in the mix underneath to keep it wet longer. Now, we're gonna go from here. There's the guts. Oh, wow, I'm liking this. This is going to be mist on the water. Mist on the water, bit out there. This is what I'm doing in my mind now. I'll explain it to you so you'll know where I'm going with it. It's mist on the water, there's the water, but it's like it's laying on the water. I don't want to do it all sideways and flat. I want to try and give that look where it's looking like it's there. You know what I mean? You want things to look like they're there. I'm gonna use a clean, fresh brush here. So I'm gonna start from the middle and I want some of this vib vibrantly 
going up the top there. Now wipe your brush. Don't keep blending with a full brush because it can start turning it into thick snot. You want dull and brighter values within your blending. So that's why you always have to wipe your acrylic. I'll start from here now and you want see how I'm getting turmoil the the bright and duller values within that stop and wipe your brush. Now I'm going to come across the water here and I'm hoping I've got to put more there. This is just the first layer. See, so that white that we flicked on there, like I said, we're probably going to lose some of that. If we need to, we can add some more of that back. All right. Happy days for everybody, eh? Now, how hard was that? It looks bullshittingly great, but at the end of the day, you just seen what I've done. That's not too hard, is it, eh? You practice. It's important to practice. Now, we're going to do the same again from the middle. It's where our vibrancy is, but this ain't going to be a sun, so bear that in mind. I'm trying to get this above the horizon line there. I'm not going to go back that way. I've got to keep going out, if anything, because the paint's picking up darker colours. That'll do. I've just thrown the brush in water because it needs to be washed again before I bring it back to the canvas again. Because I want this colour kind of in front of the horizon there like that. And then we'll tuck a little boat in there. I like the, the little additive. You can put a little hut, little boat, something like that, you know. And then we'll add some fog. So back down here again. It's pretty repetitive, but once this is done, the painting's pretty much finished, but I'm going to get some legs out of this painting. I ain't going to finish just in 15 minutes, half an hour. Got to give you viewers a bit of quality. So over this side now, boom, over there. Hang on a minute. I need more white paint. There's not enough on me brush. So I'm grabbing some more. Sometimes... You've got to have that right amount on there because if you don't, it's very frustrating. And we're going to come along here. Boom, and on top of that horizon line, bit out here a bit, yeah. Lovely, 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 beautiful nuke. Straight back in the water again. All right, let's go again. We're sitting that down, blending it with turmoil. Turmoil. And what we've got... When I've blended this, I'll just explain it to you. Sometimes visuals and talking after it teaches a person a great deal. I've got a nice vibrant bit splashing off the water there. Going to have a little bit of hidden land mass out here, so I'm not too worried about that. Now, before it does dry, I'm going to grab that toothbrush again. I'm going to wash it, wipe it, pick up that wet craft paint again, because just here, see how the brush has made a gap between it? You want it to look natural. So let's see if we can get a natural look there, yeah. Probably a bit more there. I use the craft paint because it's thinner. There we go. I'm concentrating right under there mainly, but that's it, that's it, that'll do. See, can you see the difference how you're getting that shimmer down there in your water? All right. What's next? Uh, I think now that can be dried and then we're going to add the rest of... Um... Oh, before I do, let me just give you the visual. We've got that darkness in the, the skies coming down. That's what That could have been a little bit heavy and dark, but when I put the brown here, it'll, it'll show that it colour different again. Normally when you put colours next to colours, it really shows them differently. I could add, just as an example, um, you don't need to, but sometimes I'll get carried away. Let's just say over here, I'll just put something, say, here. You can probably, if you want, put a cloud. 
you stamp a body on onto that wet sky area. Let's say about there, eh? That'll do. This is how easy wicked clouds are to do in acrylics. Uh, blending brush, blending brush, there we go. Grab a blending brush, give it a bit of a bottom, and then just lightly turmoil that. This didn't need to be there, but I'm just doing it to show some just what else you can do, okay? There's something there in the sky. Just a subtle, because it's kind of filled with glare and mist and that warm, warm dampness in the air, you see? Now, where did the um, yellow go? I'm just, is that rain? I'm just picking up some yellow, the Indian yellow, just so I can give that cloud a bit of yellow yumminess from the light hitting it. Not too much. That'll do. A bit of yellow yumminess. Leaving that brightness there, but just tucking it into that white so it joins onto it. There we go. That'll do it. See, I didn't need to do that, but I just wanted to show some people that maybe their first time here and they're maybe getting to the advanced stage, they can do things like that. All right, now I've got to dry that. Okay, that is dry. It's still... Oh, it is dry, but very, very minimal. I mean, it's still got a bit of dampness in it. I did put a lot of retarder in there. I don't need those blending brushes. They can sit in there. Now, I do want an appropriate brush for... I'm going to use a filbert, a flat filbert. Uh, I want burnt umber. Now, I'm going to use some burnt umber. And I want to get this land mass in there and tucked in behind. So I still want to make this look like it's in front of what I'm going to put in there now. So I'm going to put this on, dry it, and then I can hopefully do some dry blending fog in the front of it, okay? And we'll see just how the burnt umber is going to look. Um, if it's going to, yeah, I suppose it'll be all right. So I'm going to use the filbert. Now the filbert is shaped like that, okay? And I want to have it at the top, you can do things sideways, no, sideways, upside down, or this way. I want to do it that way and kind of create the top of my landmass in this sort of motion. And I can use this to, I'll show you, to hide things behind. So I haven't got me brush bombed on yet. I'll just grab my glasses. Oh, they're slowly breaking. Now I'll start from the edge here. Yeah, that's okay. So I want to kind of come from here, like it's behind there. And then it's going to be there, bit there. And then it's slowly coming a bit darker where the fog's not in front of it, okay? And there we go. Actually, this brush is not the best. I'll grab the other one. Where are you? Where are you? There you go. The, the head on, the hairs on that one have spaded out. This one should be, yeah, that's more darker. So I want this quite dark here. And with any land mass, mountains or hills, never bring them down off your painting. Always bring them up off your painting. Okay? It's just more pleasurable to look at. So we're going to get this down to the water line and it's going to be covered up with fog down there. So down to here to our water line. That paint is still quite damp and rubbery under there. So I'm being careful not to press too hard. If I press too hard, it's going to lift and it can grievously disappoint you if that starts to happen quite a lot. I'm going to get a bit of the black and just mix in some of that because it's the brown is dulling down a bit, so I'm getting a mixing a bit of black with that. Because I want it darker. See how that brown went a bit pale? Now I'm trying to make it look like some of it's behind all that fog there. A bit lighter in colour there. I'll have a look in the monitor. It's looking not 
bad. Let me see here. Okay, now I do need that a bit darker, just so as the fog will stand out in front of it. But I'm stamping it on because if I rub it too much, it'll lift that paint off the retarder. Now I'm holding the brush sideways. There we go. Be sure to check out Friday night, 8 p.m. Perth, Western Australia time. I have my Friday Night Live where I connect with my YouTube subscribers. You get to talk with me. We ask questions one-on-one -on -one live and have a great hour of time together connecting with each other. Okay, I've got to do pretty much the same on the other side now. How long have I been going for? 40 minutes, plenty of time. I normally like to get a painting done in an hour. See, I can see a little gap right here, so I'll work my way to it. I'll, I'm looking for gaps within that mist. There we go. And I can see a little bit more there. Reasonably light. Tucked in there. Not too much. That'll do. Then we'll... A bit more here. A bit more in front of it. Now this is a long handle brush so I can loosely paint this out. I'll try and rub that in there from a distance so the camera can not have my buffy head in the way. And we'll get this one, let's say, coming off here. We'll get the top mapped in first and then we can just block it in. About to there. Okay, good stuff. In hindsight, this is all the way across, but it's covered up with this fog, cloud, mist, dawn. You know how the stuff floats around in the morning from the cold night and the sun's starting to warm it up and lifts it up into this air? I've seen a bit of that from the aeroplanes when you're coming into a city early in the morning and the sun's just rising and you look out the window and you can see all the damp air rising with the sun hitting it so there we go quickly get this in some of that's in the front here so careful around this bit here just sort of place it and when i put the fog there it'll sit everything down it's like when i do a cloud and i add the yumminess it brings the baby home how's that looking i'll just squip me up. yep that's kind of going within there that's good that's good These are little trees. You can have little scratchy bits on this if you want, just to emulate trees there. I'm just keeping it simple for the tutorial's sake. Okay. How else is that going? Let me have a look at that. Getting there, getting there. Now we've got to sit that down, okay? So I need to dry that. Okay, let's hope that's dry enough. Now, we want to dry blend the rest of it, all right? So what we need is a small blending brush. I love using my little flat that's all been spaded out from abuse. Can you see that? And you want just normal white acrylic from the tube. You don't want that craft paint now. This is important. So what I'll do, I'll just get a bit of that down there. And I'm, gonna, I'm not just going to dip my brush in there. What I'm going to do is I will even that out on my palette like that. Get it into an even sheet. I'll wipe the excess off my finger there. Now I want to get that on there. I'm While I'm doing this I'm trying not to get any big ugly blobs on the edge of my brush there, okay? Okay. See, there's not a lot on there. There's even probably too much on there. And I want to try, let's see if we can give it a go. Let me see over here. All too much, see? I'm taking some of that off. Now, I'm going to try and put white there. Let's see. 
if that's turning yellow, if that starts to turn yellow, I'll know that this paint is too wet to do still. Now I want to bring this fog in front of that land mass that I put there. Bring it over the water, dry blending it. And you can cover the bottom area there and try and have layers of it just lacing on top of that water, floating with the evaporation. How's that looking? Is it turning yellow? No, my, my brush is still white, so that's an indication that the paint's a little bit dry, which is good. You've got to have the dry surface. And this is a procedure within itself you can practice also. I'll come up there a bit, get a bit more, dance it along where that is, and then blend. Okay, coming across the water, blend across the water. It is, it, it's working, but if anything, it is still a little bit on the wet side. I want to get any, any little heavy marks you make, quickly blend them out. And this paint needs to pretty much come all the way from here, blending bits of mist on top of this water. See these blobs here? Wipe your brush and quickly blend them back down to just mist if you can. Let me have a look in the monitor. It's starting to look like mist, it's starting to do the job. And this is pretty much going all the way out here and mystifying all this area here, misting up, look at that, above there. Oh, that brown still, I can feel it's a little bit wet. Blend this on top of the water there. Different bits here just floating on top of the surface there. Blend those big blobs out. And the trick is to take your time. How's that looking? Mm, not too bad, but I'm a bit... It's a, I'll come back to that side. We'll do this side now. I'll, before I come back to that side, I'll, I'll give it another dry. So we've got more fog here. It's over this stuff. Very bright, vibrant. It's pushing the bottom of that landmass down with all this fog. Okay. Fog, mist, whatever you want to call it. I want to have a look just to see how that's looking. Not too bad. It is what it is. Okay, where are we? Sit all this down with there. Do a bit and then blend it. Blend it up into the sky. Dry blending, that's all it is. Surface is dry, the brush is dry. Don't ever use a wet brush because then you're going to really dampen it up and <laughs> if you haven't done it before, you'll get very frustrated and as I say, you could get grievously disappointed. Right, we're going to come here. I'm killing that line. See that hard line against the light blue and the dark brown? I'm killing that and then I'm blending this, dry blending that. So it just looks like smoke, fog, mist going up there like that. Because if I go along like this, I'm going to do what I end up doing on the other side and it looks a bit, not quite gratingly great. So hide the join and mystify it. Hide the join. When you stamp it on like that, it's sitting the paint on. When you brush it on, it can push it down to the surface and you don't want that mystify that, get them, feel that fog hitting the surface of the water there. I suppose it's fog mist, I don't know. Now is that looking, see in the middle here, we need a little bit more paint, sorry about this, a little bit more paint there like that. I'm just going to spread it out on my palette, wipe my finger, load the brush, I want some billowing, oh, get rid of the blobs off the edge of it. I want like this little bit sort of woofing out here on their own as well. Hopefully they look like they're sitting on the water. There's a lot more in here. Now I do want to kind of hide that bit there. That's it. Where else 
was there here? There we go. And with fog, you can have dull and brighter values of it. It just means some areas of it are thicker and more condensed. Different lights going through it, hitting it, whatever, whatever. Okay, uh, I want to kind of wipe the brush and really dry this bit because it's a bit too harsh. I'm going to lighten that up. So I've pretty much got everything off my brush. Lighten that up there. And maybe see here, I've got pretty much still nothing on that brush. And we'll get a nice white. Look at that. So powerful, isn't it? Just looks like fog on there. That's white fog. Does it look like fog, you reckon? <sighs> you can dry blend your clouds. You can, if you haven't done it before, you want to practice it and see, because everyone's painting habits are different. You know, I'm showing people how I paint. I'm teaching you how you can paint like me if you want, but everyone's habits are different there, um, Chris Duffy. There we go, we sort of got fog on there. We've got, I like to get this kind of more realistic fog up there. It's all right, some up there, some here. Now there is a little boat in there. I'm just wondering whether I should put it in there or not. I'm, but if I do do it, I need the most smallest flat, which is like this. Okay. And just the most... I'll, I'm just going to get the brown and put it with some white. Let's hope I don't bugger it up, eh? So we'll get, yeah, this colour here, this is, a, I'm just looked at the reference and yeah, it's pretty much that value. I can darken it later on if I need to. Okay, I guess the comments too, what, no, I'm fine. Okay, so the boat's, I'm going to put it where I want, it's right in the guts there, but I'll put it about here. And what do we have there? We pretty much have the bottom of it sitting on the water, but very lightly and broken up a bit because it's in between fog. And I can dry it and add more fog in front of it to sit it down as well. Uh, so we got there and it's coming up a bit higher here. Just so long as it ramble, resembles the silhouette of a little added value in the painting of a boat. There. What was in the, I don't know why I left the middle out. Can you see that? Yep, yeah, you can see that. Now there is a um, motor on the end of it, but not too high, but not too low. Distinctive enough. This brush is too high to do it like that, so. Up there somewhere. What I will do as well, which I did see, is I'll use my little um, script liner as well, where I can get bits like that done. Bits there like that. And there are a few silhouettes of men's heads on there, I'm assuming. So we'll try and get something emulating that. I think that's the right word you use. Just something there. I'm picking up some darker value and just sloshing it around with my brush here, trying to get darker values within there. There we go. Let's try and get some of that a bit darker. Now well, what I will do now is I will I will dry this so, so that I can get other colours in front of it because it's mudding up. Okay. Get some more of that. Just let me finish this colour first. I 
I want to just dry that. Okay, where are we? Where'd that brush go? There it is. Now, I'll get a bit of the darker value, just so as I can darken that up where it needs be. Just pockets of it. Is that? No, it's not dark enough, you dag. What's going on here? That's oh, because I didn't get any paint on the brush. Is anywhere there? That'll do. Okay, that's right. Now I just want to sink that down within there so it's still behind all the mist so that I shouldn't have thrown it in the water that brush I was using for mist I threw it in the water uh, I'm going to dry it now so I'm just drying it on a towel so bear with me a moment I want it very very dry I do not want it um, wet at all otherwise it won't work let's hope I dried that enough now we've got to sink that down so we're going to grab our white again and just subtly, let's see if we can get some in front of that, sink it down there. Just so he's behind all that fog, okay? I don't know, he's out there doing something in the early morning or late evening. Whatever he's doing, we just don't know. That looking okay? Yeah, I suppose that'll have to do it, mate. That will have to do it. All right, um, pretty much it. Pretty much it. I will put my autograph on here, down the bottom. So where's the, I'll just use the brown there. And then I'll whack a frame on it. Nice little autograph in the bottom right if I can. Is that chat still working? Where are we? Down here. That's too fat. Where's the other one? I hate a fat, ugly autograph. You want it as fine as you can get it, really. I'm just using the brown. I should have used the dark blue, but it's all dried up on me. Okay, this one is a little bit finer, so we'll use this brush here. And like I say, all my tutorials are for sale. Message me on Facebook, and they're all bought through PayPal. All the links are in the description below. If you want to message me on Facebook to buy a painting, if you want to join my art group, there's a few links there. There's about 11 there. Okay, check them out. Steve little footprint. All right, we'll whack a frame on that and see how it looks. So we'll get rid of that reference picture so it doesn't balk what we're trying to do here. Okay, whack a frame on there and there you go. That's not a bad looking painting in this frame, is it? That's not too shabby. Got just the sun setting or dawning over a lakey water, some far ground there and a little boat in there, okay? And our shimmer on top of the water there. Just remember, you can do that, okay? And I hope you learned something there and always put a comment in the description below if you ever got a question you want me to answer in my Friday Night Lives. All my comments are read by me and if there's any questions in there, they get addressed by the following Friday Night Live. Any question in any of my videos, okay? And just remember, if you like what I'm doing here, you make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't, you tell everybody, all right? All the best. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.